In our first story, Parliament has approved private sector participation in the management of the Electricity Company of Ghana under the concessionary agreement, under the second Millennium Challenge Compact, for which Ghana is getting $482 million grant from the U.S. Millennium Electricity Company, that is known within the sector as Miralco, is to get a 45 or 49% stake in ECG, while a group of local companies are handed 51%. The minority is however questioned the capacity of the companies. Former Deputy Power Minister John uh, Jinapo says Ghanaians will pay the ultimate price in tariffs. Energy Minister Boache Jakum told Parliament that workers at the ECG are excited about the current arrangements. Number 19, we have TG Energy Solutions. If you look at their physical address, it is empty. This is a company that has no physical address. Because we can, my worry is that some of these companies have no track record in the energy sector. Some of these companies cannot tell us what they've done so far in the energy sector to support Miracle in managing the concession. Because we can, I'm equally worried about the outstanding bills of ECG. The understanding is that the outstanding debts or liabilities will be ring fenced, and then ECG would have to deal with that. Mr. Speaker, this is problematic. Mr. Speaker, if we continue this way, and we do not look at some of these critical issues I'm raising, my fear is that at the end of this concession, Mr. Speaker, the end user, the end consumer, will be called upon to pay higher than they are currently paying. Initially, there were no guarantees whatsoever for labor. It was through negotiations that we made five years of employment the first option, which Labour did not appreciate. And finally, we came to the TED, which said that there shall be no involuntary lay layoffs during the entire period of the concession, which is 20 years. Uh, still in Parliament, Fisheries Minister Elizabeth Afolikwe has told the House that government is going ahead with the implementation of the closed fishing season next month. And this is despite opposition by some fisher folk and groups. The minority in Parliament and some fishermen have kicked against the plan. But Madam Afolikwe says without the closed season, there will be no fish to catch in future. The justification for the August closed season for all gears is that one, the annual peak for reproduction of majority of pelagics is in August based on recent studies. The abundance of food or planting available for adult and juvenile fish also peaks in August, which enhances survival and viability of the juvenile fish. Fishermen confirm the presence of large percentage of gravid females in August. Furthermore, fish processors also complain of low value smoked fish during this month because the fish are full of eggs, oily, burst open and close and loose shape during smoking. This results in drop in profit margin for fish processors. The supply of high landings in August reduces the price of the products, while at the same time negatively impacting the highest potential reproductive stock during the entire year. The small pelagic stocks are currently categorized as overfished and nearing collapse based on recent stock assessments, which shows that landings have declined to the lowest level ever since recorded landings in Ghana. The speaker, if the closure is limited to a selected number of fleets and gear types, the incidence of high bycatch may not be avoided and therefore defeats the purpose of the closure. Meanwhile, some women involved in the fishing business say the close fish season could result in a high incidence of crime. Others also argued 
they have contracted loans to do business which they have to pay. So he says that he doesn't think that the idea that they want to push and insist that they would want to go fishing right now is good. He says that if they go now, they're not going to get much. They're going to get the really the fingerlings, the tiny, tiny fishes, and uh, you don't use that to celebrate Omo. He agrees that it should uh, happen, uh, the ban should be implemented, and uh, he's urging the president to just go ahead and do what he has to do. There are lots of people who depend on fishing. So for the one month, and you said your father is a fisherman, a big one at that. For the one month that you're saying that the ban should be implemented, what should the fishermen do? What should the fishmongers do? Okay, but now we see him. Maybe he will. Maybe he will. No, because he is not going to be able to get to. On the machine, no use. He is not going to be able to get to. He is not going to be able to get to. He is not going to be able to get to. He is not going to be able to get to. He feels that the fishermen should have saved something by now, so that uh, they could live on for the period. And he says that he agrees that uh, he would love for them to go get a good catch, but except he feels that uh, they won't get much right now. You are right. You are right. I fine. Okay. So essentially he's saying that if it happens that we implement the ban for the one month and there are results, then next year we can decide that we're going to implement it again. But if it turns out that there are no results, the close season doesn't yield any results, that doesn't bear any fruits or they don't get a good catch thereafter, are you then saying that if it doesn't work out, then we shouldn't implement the ban anymore? Okay. So We've not seen this before. We won't agree. This is our productive days. We go fishing to get money to cater for our children. If the fisher folks stop fishing, what work do you expect them to do? It's not true they only get fingerlings. You can't stop people fishing with light, but you would want to stop us. If they stop, we will also stop. We are pleading with the president. This is what we do to make ends meet. We plead with him to permit us to continue fishing till the end of the year. Then he can take an action. Well, let's take you up north. And the paramount chief of the Talency traditional area in the Upper East region is worried that the destruction of the environment due to activities of some small-scale miners makes it difficult for land reclamation measures to be put in place to yield any results. Addressing the governing board of the Minerals Commission, the Tong Rang, who is a former member of parliament, said he was against small-scale mining of any form. He rather advocates for deep shaft mining to keep the environment safe. Upper East Region correspondent Albert Sorry has more. The Talensi district of the Upper East Region is one of the areas in Ghana where gold abounds. Unfortunately, activities of illegal small-scale miners continue to be a major problem in this area. 
addressing the governing board of the Minerals Commission when the board paid a working visit to the Talensi district. Paramount chief of the Talensi traditional area, Tongran Kugubilsung Nelibutang, noted that he was not comfortable with some of the small scale mining activities in the area. Discussion of the environment as compared to the yield of wood that we we'll get cannot be equated to the same. And for me, I go with the deep shaft mining, that is deep shaft underground mining. If a country wants to prevent any destruction of this biological cover, especially the forest cover, best thing to go for deep shaft mining and control the problem. The governing board of the Minerals Commission embarked on a two-day working visit to mining areas in the Upper East region. The board visited mining sites belonging to Cardinal Resources and Shanji Mining Ghana Limited, both small-scale mining companies operating at Bani in the Talensi district. Chairman of the governing board of the Minerals Commission, Samson Kwekubuafu, entreated the mining companies to employ some of the residents of the area as it was one way to bring development there. Yeah, some of them claim they paid taxes to the government. Yes, it's true. But then the, the community should be employed. The locals, like these people, that's why I'm impressed about Canada. About 90% of their workers are people from the area here. From the area, you saw it, them yourself. You were with me. You know that I'm exaggerating. And then um, training, employ the locals, and then make your social responsibility. I just said that sometimes they may not need water. But if you go and provide water, you so sit down with them. Let the community be involved. Upper East Regional Minister Roxin Bukari called on the governing board of the Minerals Commission to take measures that will continue to ensure that mining companies meet their obligations to government. The problems of this region are three areas. And I think that these areas are water, our roads, energy, these three things. And if you are not coming to explore, at least help us get these things provided to us. Education, I wouldn't want, what is the key of our success? So they should remember their social responsibilities. And again, uh, this assembly should also be given the support to benefit, to pay their obligations. On their part, the two mining companies assured the governing board of the Minerals Commission that they were maintaining high professional standards in their operations. But yes, there is a guideline there, of course. How can you come and enter into an environment, whether it's a Greek mining or whatever <laughs> it is, and just come in and destroy and do and do and come in for what you want and goodbye, Charlie? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's for today. But we are not here for today. I showed you this morning on the screen, uh, anywhere from 15 to 30 years we have to be around. So who are we causing problems for ourselves? We have a memorandum of understanding with the Bane community where we work. Now this MOU that was signed between us and the community has this content. We are to build a nine unit classroom block provide two places of public conven convenience, mm -hmm. a dam, and all that we see here, library facility, scholarship, and then priority of employment. Albert Sorry, Joy News, Bani. Well, let's move on and talk about crime. The Central Regional Police Command is holding two persons who are part of a group that inflicted cutlass and machete wounds on some residents of Abra over a piece of land. And the police say they are close to arresting some 11 more suspects who are alleged to be terrorizing staff of the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, the Academy of Crimes of King, and residents of the Abra community over the illegal sale of land. At a news conference that was convened in Cape Coast, the residents of Abra called on the police to do more to protect lives and property. It's from where Richard Kujunya can reports from. There have been claims and counterclaims over the family that has titled to the land on which the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital and Academy of Christ the King are situated. 
lands belonging to the two institutions are being resold by family members. Two rival factions are on a collision course, but the situation is turning bloody as one of the factions are alleged to have attacked members of the other faction, injuring five in the process. Police in the central region have confirmed the arrest of two persons and have assured the staff of the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, the Student of Academy of Christ the King, and the Abra community of their safety. But spokesperson of the Eju Ansa family, Kwesiafo, whose members were assaulted, are calling on the police to do more to apprehend the perpetrators. Why would we live in a country that we believe in freedom and justice and be, be going through this torture, this inhuman treatment in this 21st century? It must not happen. We want the IGP to come in, else we shall advise ourselves. If we say we want to get up, I'm not sure there will be peace in this, in this town. The suspects, 15 or more people that beat our brothers or my brothers and my cousins, five of them, they beat them. They stole their money, their bicycle, everything. Those suspects are still walking freely as we speak now. One person, Kotompo, is selling hospital, Cape Coast teaching hospital lands, selling academy lands. His boys are beating academy boys. They send them to court and they are freed. His boys are beating Cape Coast teaching hospital workers. They send them to court and they are freed. What is happening? We will not sit there for them to cheat us. Residents say they live in fear and called on the Inspector General of Police to intervene to ensure that nothing untoward happens to them. Richard Kwejenyakon. Joy News, Cape Coast. And that's it for the news. We have more news as um, we review the newspapers, look at the online portals. But please make sure that you also watch us live. We have a page on Facebook. Join us on TV is the name of the page. We have uh, a channel on YouTube, My Joy Online TV. Myself, Kujo Yangson, uh, Kofi, and then Mama Vio We'll be here to review the newspapers and the online portals. We'll do that shortly. Stay on.